up everybody? I've had my DFAM and Mother32 for about two weeks now. Uh, I've got it fully integrated with Ableton. I've been starting to write with it. Um, and I've figured out a couple patching tricks that aren't included in the manuals uh, that help sort of deal with the craziness of the DFAM. Uh, and I've also sort of discovered some of the more hidden features of the Mother. So let's take a look. What I've really learned after two weeks is that the simplicity of the Mother really comes from just the one oscillator up top. Um, but what you kind of have to dig for in the mother is all the hidden features of the buttons. We'll fire off the mother sequence right now. Now an interesting thing is you can enter step mode and turn off these steps. However, the pages rotate when there are 32 step sequence going. Uh, so it's hard to stay on top of what's happening or stay ahead of what's happening. Um, an alternate to that is by holding shift and rest, mute it while the sequence plays. It's pretty handy. Another feature that's hidden under the glide knob is the ratchet function. If you hold shift and increase the glide, you're actually not increasing the glide, but adding notes. The other neat effect that's hidden under the tempo and gate length knob is the swing feature of the clock. And when you hold shift and hold the position at 12 o'clock, everything is very straight. But the further you push it forward, it takes the upbeats, the second and fourth beat of a measure, and pushes them slightly forward. As you go back to 12, it takes it right back to straight feel. If you go backwards, you go behind the beat. This is helpful when you're running the DFAM off of the mother because the DFAM takes on the clock parameters of the mother. So you swing both things at the same time. All right, so let's go over some of the cool stuff I've learned about the DFAM. I mean, besides the sound quality, <laughs> that's the first reason right there. So I've disconnected both of these from Ableton and reconnected it just in the standard way that are synced in standalone mode. You can get a lot of clean and dirty bass sounds out of the DFAM, which is what I love. Pretty regularly, I want to get some more percussive kick and snare. So a good way to do that is to patch uh, out of the VCO envelope generator and into the input of the noise level on the DFAM. Um, then you'll also take the pitch output and go to the input of the VCF mod. And what that's going to basically do is it's going to keep your down position as a kick drum and your all the way um, up position on pitch as a snare sound. It's just white noise. So I'm going to turn everything down except uh, one and three. And 
arm it and here we go I'm going to retune my oscillators Now, one of the things with the DFAM that I find is because of the complexity uh, shown in the box diagram here, uh, there's a lot of variables going on here. So slight movements tend to upset a preset that you have fairly easily. Um, I'll show you how easily we can do that. I'm adding in the first oscillator on top of the second to add some different characters. I'm not sure I like them. Now this often happens when I'm working on a drum patch um, where you end up with these high sounds that are flying all over the place. But there is a way to sort of force pitch them, which is kind of interesting. Uh, involves using the Mother 32 up top. So if we listen to the default sequence I have programmed on pattern number one, sorry. Now, if I want to impose that character of pitch onto this drum sound, it's possible. Remember the drum sound just like this. I'm going to add in a second snare. I like the pattern of that, but I don't really like the tone of the sound. So let's, let me show you this. All right, now my oscillator from the mother is spitting out a saw wave. So I'm going to take that output of the saw wave, VCO saw output, into the first molt input. Now whatever goes into that first molt input is going to be replicated into both of these molt outputs. I'm going to send the first one to the DFAMS VCO1 control voltage in. And the second one is going to go to VCO2's control voltage in. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take the VCO from the mother and force the two VCOs here to act in the same fashion. I'm going to bypass this effect and bring in the drums that we had going before. Now 
when I enable the effect, you'll notice that the pitch of the drums change. And if you listen to the drums on their own, they take on the tonal quality of that pitch from the mother. Now the interesting thing about this is that you're basically telling both of these oscillators to act as this oscillator, but you still have these two independent controls here. So what that ends up giving you is a very, very strange kind of macro and micro tonal control here. I'll show you. to keep it up in the high register. And this is a more subtle change. Bypass it again. Not pleasant at all. A little bit better. If you change the octave of the mother, it has a it has an effect in changing the bottom D fan. I'll go up another octave. Up another. Up another. That's where I like it. Maybe one below. Yeah, there it is. Then bring back in the melody. If you have anything you want to know more about, please let me know in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe, and I'll have more of these videos posted soon.